This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm going to tell you what I think about breed specific legislation. Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's topic is about BSL, breed specific legislation or breed specific laws. Um, most of you are probably aware of what it means and really what it is is you know certain breeds being banned uh, typically by cities municipalities creating bylaws banning certain types of dog breeds a number of cities around the world have enacted breed specific legislation you know primarily in response to a public outcry where there's been some type of vicious dog attack and on a person and you know the, the politicians have been called to say you've got to do something you've got these vicious pit bulls you got to ban them. You got to prevent these dog bites. And this has been going on for a number of years. You know, but is this even effective? Does this even work? Fairly recently, there was a, a review study done uh, of the Netherlands, which has had breed specific laws for a number of years. And they wanted to know I mean, has this legislation reduced the number, the incidence of dog bites? And it hasn't. So yes, it's a popular thing to do. It's easy to go ahead and ban a type of breed thinking we're doing something good, especially in response to public outcry, but it's not effective. And more than that, it's, it's probably causing a lot of harm. The most common dogs to be banned are the pit bulls and the pit bull related breeds, you know, such as the Staffies, the American Bull Terrier, etc. Some areas have also gone ahead and deemed other dogs dangerous, you know, such as Rottweilers, such as Mastiffs, etc. And really varies around the world. But th is this a good idea? Is this fair? Is it right? And ultimately, is it doing the purpose that's been intended in the first place? Is it really decreasing the number of dog bites? And no, it's not. So what happens in a town, you know, such as a city or Montreal, which recently enacted, you know, breed specific legislation banning pit bulls? Well, first of all, you know, you've got the dogs that are directly affected. And here you've got these dogs, you have their owners that are either forced to give their dog up, potentially it's going to be euthanized, to sort of hide their dog. They're going to have difficulty finding a place to live. And they've got to walk their dog and, you know, have the very restrictive bylaws, either strictly banning the dog or saying that dog can be out, but it's got to have a cage muzzle on, etc. You've got this unsocialized dog. So right there, you've got the dogs that are suffering. Then the dog owners, the dog guardians, such as yourself, you know, they're also hugely impacted. You know, first of all, it's be super difficult for them to find a place to live with their so quote unquote banned dog. Um, they may be forced to have their dog give up and be given up and ultimately be euthanized. Completely unfair, especially in light of the fact that it's not actually decreasing the number of dog bites. I mean, can you imagine it if you were a super responsible invested owner? You got this little pit bull puppy, even when he went to a shelter. You put all this energy into training. He's super well socialized. You've done all, given him all the adequate veterinary care. Like you've done everything right as an owner. You're super responsible. You walk him on a leash. You bought, buy your dog license. You pick up your dog's poop. You do all those right things. And you've got this super well socialized, happy dog. Really what you want in a community. That's what we want. We want responsible dog owners. You're doing all those right things. And then you've got some politician who probably doesn't even own a dog, pass, you know, encouraging him and his buddies, or her potentially, to pass this dog bylaw, or this municipal bylaw banning, for instance, pit bulls or the pit bull related breeds in their city. It's so, so unfair. And then when you think about it, you've even got you know, issues around public safety. You've got, for instance, dog bylaw officers that aren't enforcing existing bylaws, say, for instance, around people having their dogs licensed, about having their dogs leashed, about, you know, controlling their dogs adequately, because now they've got to go, go around and police, you know, this quote unquote, you know, breed specific ban. Got to make sure that there's no pit bulls out there anywhere in that city. They've got to enforce that law, which makes no, 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 no sense at all. So if we're looking to decrease the number of dog bites, I mean, what should we be doing then? I mean, does it make sense to have breed specific legislation? No, it's not. What makes more sense to, first of all, enforce existing bylaws and make sure we've got dogs that are leashed, owners that are responsible, that you know, are walking their dogs appropriately, so we're not dealing with interactions, dogs that are trained well, 
that if there's going to be any type of laws, we're actually enacting, you know, dangerous dog bylaws, whatever that may be. And, and that you have penalties, one that financially would affect an owner, that laws or bylaws or laws that can directly be applied to someone is, you know, essentially they've got a dangerous dog, they can be charged, not just essentially be consequence free. Which is the whole point in the first place. You're trying to decrease the number of dog bites. We don't want, I don't want a dangerous dog. I don't want to be walking, you know, my neighbor's dog, a little tool up there on my rail trail and have some big aggressive dog come up and attack her or attack me. Of course not. And it's not about breed. It's about a dog being dangerous. Fortunately, you know, probably 99% of the dogs that I see are awesome dogs for the most part. They're pretty well socialized and that's how you get your dog socialized by interacting. My experience in veterinary practice is that the pit bulls I saw were like some of the happiest dogs. They were the best clients. They were the easiest dogs to treat. They were so happy to come into the clinic. I mean, if I had to look at and where have I had some more of my like dog instances where I've you know had uh, bites and chomps and chews on my chin. I mean, probably the biggest bite he had from was from a little Chihuahua who flew out of a cage and he was hanging on to my chin. So it's not about the breed. It's obviously about the dog and the owner. More, more importantly than that, it's not even about the dog. It's about the owner in the first place and you know what's happening around, how are they training or not training their dog? Do they want their dog to become a big tough fighter? Do they, do they want their dog to be you know, this responsible, upstanding dog citizen? Which fortunately, most of the dogs I see are, most of the dog owners I see are like that. Um, regardless of the breed. So really, when it comes down to it, it's all about making like some good common sense public policy. It's not about making some, you know, reacting to a public outcry. We've got to ban that breed, which makes no, no sense at all. So I really hope, first of all, that one, you know, some of our politicians take note of what's happened in, in other countries where they're actually not seeing a decrease in number of dog bites. Uh, secondly, too, they start to apply some common sense. You know, what are we trying to do? We're trying to decrease the number of serious dog interactions, the number of dog bites, and make public policy around that. So we're looking at dangerous dogs that were ir irregardless about the breed, not banning the breed. So thanks you guys for watching this video. I'd love to hear what you think, so please leave comments below. Um, other couple things, if you yet to subscribe, click up there to subscribe. Click down here to like this video. And lastly, if you've yet to do so, I encourage you to sign up for my newsletter. We can click that link in the box below. And then when you do that, I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.